Hi, Dr. Rohan Virani here, your mentor for immediate load implants. And this is going to be another interesting video on question and answers from our inner circle community. So let me quickly go to the question directly. So Dr. Harish from our inner circle community is asking, is intraoral welding versus jig, which is better according to case selection? So basically Dr. Harish wants to know in which cases we should do intraoral welding. And in which cases with basal implants, we should use jig and a metal framework. Now, before I give the answer to this question, if any one of you is wondering what is inner circle and how you can be a part of this community, which is growing crazily at this moment, you can simply scan this scan code, which I've given on my screen. Mind you, this is a limited edition community, which means on every month, we only open up a few slots. So if you are watching this video, you can try your luck, scan this code and see if you can become a part of the inner circle community. Now, coming back to this question by Dr. Harish, whether he should be using the intraoral welder. First, let me tell you that Trisa Enterprise has an amazing, very economical welder, which is 40% lesser than the European welders. And with years of my experience, I can assure you that it welds better than most of the welders available in the market. So if you want to know about the Trisa Enterprise welder, you can connect on the numbers given above. And let me now quickly tell you about when to do welding. So intraoral welding, basically you do to stabilize your implants because we all know that if the implants during the time of insertion and loading, if there is any mobility in these implants, there will be soft bone, bovine bone formation and failure of the implants. So if you feel that the torque achieved during your implant placement is very less, that is the number one indication of intraoral welding. If you're doing a multiple extraction case and there is going to be a lot of tissue shrinkage, you can first do the intraoral welding, give the patient an interim prosthesis and then switch to a permanent prosthesis. If you feel that you're not going to get a proper jaw relation, which means the bite which you're taking for the patient is skewed, not proper, and you would require repeated alterations on your prosthesis, that is number three indication of your intraoral welding. If you feel that overall the patient complies, which means that after the surgery is not going to maintain oral hygiene, he may be eating hard foods, or you feel somewhere there's a scope of problems after your surgery, intraoral welding should be done so that you have peace of mind. So friends, I hope you got all the indications of intraoral welding in the patients whenever in which situation you should be doing. In any other situation where you feel confident about your workflow, you have a good lab, you can use the jigs and place the prosthesis directly using the framework as mentioned in our books also. I hope you have all gone through the textbook written by me because a lot of doctors who have gone through the textbook have given super opinions that it has really changed their practice. If you want more information regarding the textbook or the online classes or our upcoming programs which also include the zygoma, pterygoid and other workshops in the patient you can connect on the numbers given above if you have any queries more related to the intraoral welding do put up in the comment box till next time thank you very much